our chances are looking pretty slim. You see these? These are the blueprints to that place. I nabbed them from a different job and I've been looking at them for weeks now. <sighs> They're almost done with the construction. It won't be long before they find me again, not with a small army at their side. And we aren't going to be looking over our shoulders for the rest of our lives either. The only way to show them that they are truly useless is to escape their grasp once again. But this prison, it's amazing. It's the epitome of perfection. perfection. That's what we have created in this new prison. And it's so good, it even has four cells. We don't need four cells if we only need to contain him. But this prison is inescapable. He may not have had help in the past, but now he might get so desperate he'll try to have someone break him out. And when they inevitably fail and get caught, we can lock them up as well. That's a good point, but it better be a security say this time. Don't worry, we took the most lengthy of precautions. We have chunk bands, bat glitches, pearl glitches, and we even got our hands on indestructible end crystals. We had to compromise some of our morality. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Do anything if it means containing him. Let's be honest, he never deserved a humane prison in the first place. And even less now, after what he did to Ray and his men. Remember what we're doing this for. Our morality couldn't be more in the right. But we're running out of options. And we're running out of time, Sven. I won't let you down. Let's get straight to the point. This is the best prison made so far. For solo escapes, this thing just can't be contested. Go ahead and argue that the most inescapable prison is Vault 36, Apollo's Vault, Guardian's Vault, Vault's Vault, or whatever other amateur prison that has been made since this accidental trend started. But in my book, none comes close to Gaia's vault. This is the crowning moment of all prisons, the one that has been built up to for months. This prison was made by a team of four builders and built upon all the strengths of every prison before it and eliminated every flaw of everything previous. And it's so good that people actually think that it could be built in survival realistically. It is the pinnacle of maximum security, and for the past few weeks, I've been stumped. Every prison that I've escaped, I've done solo. Not once have I had any outside help, unlike the other prison escapists. And when looking into this prison, I had the same mindset going into it. I need to escape this alone. But in this current version of the prison, V3, there has been zero solo escapes from it at the time of recording. And that is simply because it's impossible. They may not have made the perfect prison from the outside, but from the inside, it is truly inescapable. Right? That's what everyone thinks, and at first I thought that that was the case as well. But the fact is that I need to escape this alone, because I have no one out there to help me. Every prison escapist has turned to the dark side, Shiratori. Even if I gave in and asked for someone to help me, there would be nobody to do it. Jerry Lum, the last remaining escapist other than me, helped build Gaia's vault. Everyone is turning against me. Why? But none of that matters now. I think I have an escape plan. I have everything set up. It should be ready for when I inevitably get caught. Speaking of, I should get going. I'll see you in a bit. Took you long enough. You don't talk. You're coming with us. And what if I don't come with you? What are you gonna do? Kill me? I set my spawn at a bed a hundred thousand blocks away. You kill me, I'm gone for good. <laughs> I don't think so. Hey, what? Shut it, you are coming with us, or else your pretty little pet gets a sword through its head. Do you understand?
For those of you who somehow don't know what Gaia's Vault is by now, let me give you a brief refresher. Gaia's Vault is the third and most inescapable prison built by Sien Sven. The prison stands at about 140 blocks tall, and it has a 22 by 22 chunk perimeter. It has the prison classics, the outer walls have water and lava, the interior of the prison is filled with obsidian, there's trapped portals and elder guardians, and the cell has a regenerating cobblestone wall, and there's water, yada yada yada, and so forth. We've seen this already. It's in the details where this prison succeeds. They have a working toggleable chunk ban system that will permanently ban anyone in the chunk until it is turned off, and there is also a suicide button that permanently chunk bans the entire prison. It really shows how far these guys are willing to go. And also, the bed respawn trap is new. It uses a glitch where the game thinks you're in a block when you respawn, so it teleports you up until there's sufficient room for you to spawn. This makes it very difficult to smuggle items in. The guards have composter glitches to x-ray through the walls of the prison and to see where you are at all times. There's also a lockdown system which turns off every chunk band but the middle one, locks every door, turns off every portal, and makes an alarm sound. This lockdown can be triggered by the prisoner doing literally anything that does not align with the guard's handbook. And speaking of, there is an entire handbook that they wrote for this thing, going over every scenario and every protocol that should be taken in case of escape attempts. You can find this handbook on the Gaia's Vault website. They made a website for this prison? But the last and arguably most polarizing thing in this prison is the indestructible end crystals. Indestructible end crystals can be obtained in survival by respawning the ender dragon and then moving the end crystal away or killing the ender dragon in the brief few seconds that it's respawning. This alone would be extremely difficult to do, to just get one of these crystals in survival, and they're all placed absolutely perfectly in this prison that is completely encased in obsidian. A feat like this, in reality, would be improbable to the point of impossibility. But let's be real. The probability of this prison existing in a real survival world was already tarnished by it having thousands, if not millions, of stacks of obsidian, thousands of observers, hoppers, pistons, and other redstone components, chests full of the most highly enchanted and rare items, and the thousands of sugar cane and cows needed to make the chunk pen books, and don't even get me started on the Elder Guardians. There are 168 perfectly timed, name-tagged Elder Guardians that are crammed into specific 2x2 areas around the prison, which are spawned in with command blocks. And by the way, not only would it be nearly impossible to get these things into your prison, since you have no way of transporting them, they have natural thorns, laser eyes, and you'd probably have to carry them over thousands of blocks over land and sea just to get them into your prison, but there's also a chance that you might not even get close to the 168 Elder Guardians in your entire world. Since there's only 3 per monument, they don't respawn once killed, and Monuments can only be spawned in deep ocean biomes no more than 32 chunks apart, but if you manage to travel millions of blocks to the farthest parts of your world to find 56 unique ocean monuments, and brought back 168 Elder Guardians without dying from their natural thorns, laser eyes, other guardians in the monuments, underwater mobs, normal mobs, drowning or your own stupidity, and manage to hoist them up into this massive prison and encase them in obsidian, and then name tag every single one of them, they would still never spawn into the world in perfectly timed one second increments. They would all eventually sync up and act like just one Elder Guardian, rendering everything useless. So are the Elder Guardians cheating? Pretty much. But I've escaped prisons that cheat before, and I can certainly do it again. For this prison, I had a few options in mind, particularly two. But the more reasonable one would take a lot of math and time to get just right. It would take weeks, if not months, to engineer it. And I can't go that long without uploading, my subscribers will kill me. So I decided to go with the other option for this escape. I call it brute force. I'm going to smuggle in items. Not because it's the best method for the escape, not because it's the most efficient, but this is simply to spite Sven. And also, by this point, it's tradition. But even as secure, inescapable, and perfect as this prison may be, I can still take advantage of its own systems and turn them against it. They still haven't learned, and they've fallen right rained. into our hands. He was planning to get captured. We knew that much. But to make sure he didn't try any funny business, we got some leverage over him. So he's on his way. Yes, sir. Now remember, if you try to escape, it dies. Okay.
This may seem pretty hopeless, but there's still a chance that I can clutch this. Even though the guards thought that they had the jump on me, they caught me exactly when I wanted them to. There are the least amount of guards online for this, and that's good. But to be honest, it would be pretty hard to get even the three guards and one warden on at any given time, since every guard seems to be in a different time zone, and believe me, arranging that sort of thing is nearly impossible. Almost everything went according to plan, but now they have Shiratori. I need to be extra careful. Inside the nether portal, I must wait for the guard to tell me to come back through. But inside the nether room is an ender chest, just what I needed. Inside my ender chest is the gray box. It's a shulker filled with everything I need to escape. I take it and an efficiency 5 netherite pickaxe and maybe some milk. Once I come through the portal, I go towards the first bed trap. And what I need to do is get my items through this place. Now what I could do is the same AFK gag that I pulled in the titan's vault escape and pretend that I'm away from my keyboard while I'm actually mining this top obsidian block. And sure, that that might work. But there's too many variables, such as I will probably have gotten the mining fatigue effect by now, and with it, it takes 13 minutes to break obsidian. And in that time, if the guards wanted to check on me, they could just go into the composter machine and kind of see me mining. Plus, any guards could use the tunnel that leads into this room and check on me manually. And since Sven doesn't want too lucky of escapes, then I'm not going to use this. So for this, I'm going to pull out my secret weapon. I'm going to chunk ban the guards. You see, while the guards were so preoccupied about the inside of their prison, they neglected to have anyone outside. And what I did was attach a little device to the top of the prison in a specific chunk that chunk bans anyone inside these chunks. And all I did was connect a few hopper timers to this thing and boom, it can switch on whenever I want to. But for ease of use, I attached it to a death switch that would turn on once I died. This is like the simplest one. I could have used something with dogs. I just decided to use this because I'm lazy. And right before I got caught, I killed myself. I was completely bluffing about my bed, but it seemed to have no effect because they still have my bird. But Mithridak, how did you get to that specific part of the prison? Aren't there outer chunk band walls that would stop anyone from entering? Why yes, but what I used to bypass this incredible menace was I built up a bit and then I right clicked. And then to cover up my build, I just made it look like the rest of the prison. They wouldn't notice, even if they looked right at it. And this chunk bend works on them and not me, because the first decon hallway and the bed gate are separated by a chunk border, which means that they will be banned, and I will be the only one left. But Mithridak, you can't possibly know which chunks the guards are going to be in at any given time. Well, normally, yes, but they conveniently wrote a book for me on where exactly they are supposed to be at every stage of the process. So anyways, it should take 15 minutes to get the chunk band started, because I set the hopper clocks to 15 minutes, and once everyone is banned, I will break this top obsidian, throw my items into this little space of the enchantment table, and then place the obsidian back. It can also be faster with milk. Now you may be wondering, Mithridak, how are you going to get yourself out of this one? Well, the answer is simple. Deception. Obama man once said to me when the prison was first released that if you get out by manipulating the guards, I'ma be angry, grr. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. It's not even that hard. With a few minutes left until the chunk band stops, I'm going to disconnect, and then as soon as all the other guards get online, I'm going to get on as well. Basically making them think that I got banned too, and in the voice call, I can be like, what the frick happened, guys? I can't join your world, Arr! while I'm breaking their bed trap. And they will most likely think it was a chunk band malfunction or a server error. They can chunk ban me all they want when I'm back online, but eventually we're gonna have to get on with the entry process. And once I'm on the other side, I hotkey to my fourth slot and boom, I got the items past the first kill check. And if you think that the guards could hear me picking up the items and then trigger a lockdown, I'd say it's gonna be a bit difficult to hear this over this. Anyways, then I go through this one person door and up to the next bed trap. Then I do the exact same thing for the second bed trap. And this one is a lot easier because the second decon hallway and guard hallway are separated by a chunk like right on the block. So it's going to be pretty easy. I'm going to wait for them to open the door and hopefully if I time the chunk band just right, which I did, it will go off right then. But if not, then I can freeze it and pretend to be AFK again. Oop, my mom came into my room, BRB. And when they're chunk banned again, I break these two blocks and maybe even this one if the door was closed when they all got chunk banned. And then I throw my shulker onto the last enchantment table. The reason I made it gray was so that it would be harder for the guards to see, because the guards have this little window where they can see the top of the enchantment table, but it's dark and there are big floating books in the way, and the items are practically inside the block above at all times anyways, so the chances of a guard noticing it are minuscule. Then I log off, and then rejoin when everyone else does, and act confused and frustrated. Hopefully the guards shouldn't be suspicious. Oh hey man, what did your mom want? I don't live with my mom. What? Then they'll kill me, and then I'll get to the last stage of the entry process. 
Now comes the part of the escape that I'm most nervous about. This has got to be perfect or else I may never see the light of day again. This is why I call this strategy brute force. Here's the situation. I'm on my way to the pit. There is a guard waiting for me, and the guard doors are closing behind me. And there's probably a guard in the room above me just to keep tabs on me. And if anything goes wrong, they can simply walk into this string and fall down immediately and try to stop me. Now I need to pull the stunt. On every prison that I've escaped so far, I have gone politely and smoothly. But this time I'm gonna go down kicking. But I'm gonna have to make them think that I'm doing something else than I actually am. The inside of these hallways have been specifically designed not to let you place any blocks whatsoever, and they make you as slow as possible. This is a hindrance, yes, but once again, the guards have created their own downfall. Along the way to the cell through this needlessly long hallway are random netherite doors that the guards must open for the prisoner to go through, and when they're open, they leave a space for blocks to be placed. I originally had another plan for this last part since I was alone in the hallway, but when I did a normal entry with the actual guards, they had Sven wait in the hallway for me, instead of of waiting in the pit like the handbook says, which further proves my point that these guys don't know what the heck they're doing. So I'm just going to assume the worst here and assume that a guard came in and walked with me down the last tunnel. I'm actually going to kill the guard who accompanies me. Also, the guard always has to walk behind me because in 1.16 players hit boxes kind of mess me up walking past him in the hallway plus it's safer for the guards. But on the last door, I go through and then place the shulker in the gap between me and the guard. It doesn't really matter when you place the shulker, you could put in front of you instead, and then, hopefully before he has time to react, I open my shulker and take out a totem of undying and 4-5 to five damage potions. This should be hopefully enough to kill a guard, even if they ate a god apple right before this. And then I chuck all the damage potions at the guard. Now this is actually pretty much suiciding yourself, because you will most likely get hit by the blast radius, but that's why I got the totems of undying out. And when the guard is dead, all I do is take everything else out of the shulker and then instantly start breaking this sign. And then I place an obsidian block here. This blocks the guard from the top coming down to me, and it will actually suffocate them in their own trap if they try to go down. Then I break the next sign down, and put water here, and then swim under the obsidian to right here. Now I need to do a clutch. If I mess this up, it's going to waste a lot of valuable time. But right before I fall down, I flip down this trapdoor, and then I flip it back up and stand on the side. Then I place obsidian at the visitor level of the pit, then I put obsidian up here, and then break this sign and put obsidian here. Now the guards can't get to me from either side. And what I do is use the trapdoor to go into the east cell shaft. Then I drink milk and break the netherite block. Thankfully, I can pull this off in time, because the guards, once again, have created their own weaknesses. The Elder Guardians don't only give me mining fatigue every second, but they also give every guard mining fatigue every second, which means that it will take them just as long to break blocks as I take. And they will have to mine two, if not three, obsidian to get to me, and I can break one netherite block a lot faster than they can break three. And no matter how many handbooks you write, and no matter how many orders that every guard memorizes, you simply cannot account for every possible action taken by the prisoner. And the guards will have no idea what to do because the specific situation isn't in the handbook. But Mithridak, won't they just go up to the main control room and chunk bang you? I highly doubt that, because I'm in one of the center chunks, which means that they would have to activate the suicide button, which will ban everyone inside the prison forever. And I have a feeling that they will think twice about banning me and everyone else before I even get into the cell. And I also have a feeling that they don't want to ban me. They want me to rot in that cell for all of eternity. When I break the netherite block, I also break this piston and this target block. Then I pearl into this redstone vent and pearl to the other side. I break this redstone torch and pearl back. This deactivated the doors for this shaft. Then I pearl back into the tunnel and over here, where I drop, at the very least, pearls, but most likely pearls and god apples. But Mithridek, in the quick reference handbook, it says that the guard would be in the cell observation tunnel for the cell. Even if they were monitoring the east cell, then they wouldn't be able to see me because the composter glitch here wasn't designed to look that way, and I'll be in and out too quickly before they can realize anything. But what if they saw the items you dropped? Well, items from above are pretty hard to see, and this cell is dark and shadowy, not to mention filled with water. But of course, I can just do this to a cell that doesn't have a guard watching over it. Then I pearl back into the redstone line, place the torch back, and once I'm out, I replace everything that I broke. 
and immediately I start mining the other shaft door. Once the guards get to me, they will find me breaking the west cell tunnel, and then they will most likely kill me, replace the blocks that I broke, and destroy the ones I placed. And then my plan goes into motion. They will most likely notice me breaking into the west cell, and they will probably put me in the exact opposite cell of the one that I wanted to go in. But the east cell is the one that I've been banking on this whole time. But I could really just place more obsidian and do this to every single cell just to be safe. Or I could even set up yet another chunk band timer and do this all when they're offline just to be safe. There's literally so many options for me to do, but I just throw them down. And once the guards have thoroughly killed me a hundred times, chunk banned me, guilt tripped me, and spat in my cereal, then I finally go down to the actual pit, and here I need to get killed to get into the cell. The blessing of light is that one day, you'll die. And you, my friend, are cursed. Good. I got all the items. Now I can finally rest. The guards are on high alert, and I'm probably being monitored by three pairs of eyes right now. But it's fine. I need to rest. I need to get my energy up for the next and last part of this escape plan. But is it worth it? Jerry Lum said that this was an eternal stalemate, that people would keep escaping this prison, and the prison builders would keep fixing the mistakes. It would go on forever. No matter if I escape this place, they're just going to release another update tomorrow. They always do. This has happened for every prison that I've escaped. A few days after I post my video, the prison builders release an update with mediocre fixes to the glaring problems that I took advantage of. This may seem like a smart move, but it's really just a pathetic attempt to salvage any reputation they had left after I thoroughly humiliated their prison. So that they can write in the comments section, We have fixed this in the new update. Yeah, he escaped this version, but he couldn't escape the new version. How long will it take them to realize that I have been escaping the new versions? I have just escaped the new version of the new version of the new version of the inescapable prison, and yet they still think that if they change a few things, or make a new prison, that it will stop me. When will it end? It's just gonna keep on going forever, isn't it? But there's where Jerry was wrong, because I only need to escape this prison once. It was never about beating the prison. It was about sending a message. Time has come. This is the point in the night where the guards are most sleepy from their long shift, and the least amount of them are online. I eat a god apple and then equip my pearls. Now I may not be able to break anything in this cell because of the indestructible end crystals, but I don't need to break anything. I'm afraid for the past few escapes I've been holding back. If I jump, crouch, and then pearl just at the right time, the game will think that I'm on top of a block, and since I'm crouching, then the game can't push me off of it. It's basically the glitch that I use to escape Titan's Vault. And if I jump and pearl, then I will slowly glitch all the way up to the top. And now here comes the part that's gonna take a lot of hunger, which is why I brought the god apples, but I could just use the bread that the guards give me every day instead. If I can't break the walls, then there's only one thing that I can do. Phase through them. quickly run to my under chest or to the warden gear station to get fully stacked and ready for battle. I should be ready to face three or four guards. Realistically, I'd just click this bed and then kill myself to get outside of the prison. But I need to teach these guys a lesson. But where are the guards? Huh. But first things first. Where's Shirotori? They must have a bunker for him somewhere outside, but that means that I can get to him before they can, or before whoever is there gets orders to kill him. Maybe I should turn on some of these trunk bands before I go out. There should be an escape portal around here. in your cell. Well, now that you asked nicely.
You have no idea what you're doing. I know exactly what I'm doing. You can't win. We'll patch everything that you did to get out. I can't let you get out. You'll never escape. I'm escaping right now. Is this it then? Is this what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? Oh, Mithridak, you have no idea what you have just done. What was he talking about? It doesn't matter. We need to get Shiratori before he does. I need to tamper with the keycard system to let the outside portal open. Now where's that escape portal? If I remember correctly, it should be around here. Aha. Something doesn't add up. There were a few things that were a bit too convenient. And where were all the guards? Sven never called them. It's almost as if... They were anticipating my escape. Plumkin? We told you not to escape, Mithridak. How could you- I'm sorry, but this is for the good of everyone in this world. What do you- You need to be contained forever. We know about your plans, and this is the only way to stop you. What do you mean? You've hurt so many people. It's time to hurt you back. No, you don't touch him! Kill it. No! Stop! Goodbye, Mithra.